Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. It's always a blessed time coming to your presence to share in your word. Spirit of a living God, we ask, Lord, that you will teach us even today again. Illuminate our inner man through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Uh, our title for today is The Battle is the Lord's. The Battle is the Lord's. And we're going to take, take in our text from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I'll be reading a few verses. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, reading a few verses. It came to pass after this also that the children of Ammon and the children of Moab and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea of this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hadazotama, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new cult and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people Israel, and givest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwell therein, and are building a sanctuary therein for the name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come out to cast us out of our possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, we thou not judge them, for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and the children. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jehel, the son of Metaliah, the Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. In the mighty name of Jesus. The battle is the Lord's. As a believer, if you're going to have victory in spiritual warfare, then what you need to do is to turn your battle to become the battle of the Lord. Amen. Now, in verses 1 and 2 that we read, the Bible says that the enemies of Judah came against it. What it did was, what it did was to form an alliance. And this wasn't a small alliance comprising of weak countries. This was an alliance consisting of great nations. And these nations, we are told, they are three. These are the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the inhabitants of Mount Seir. Now, that scripture says that they came together and covenanted themselves against, against the nation of Israel. They made a covenant, they entered into a covenant, they swore, they took an oath that they will have no rest until they have destroyed the nation of Judah. The word that is used there is that they would waste the nation of, of Judah. Now, it is not impossible, of course, the enemy goes around mobilizing itself, forming an alliance of great powers, spiritual wickedness in territories, principalities and powers taking counsel together that they will have no rest until they have wasted the church, until they have wasted the individual members of the body of Christ. And that's the reason why children of God must rise up because at any point in time, the enemy is always covenanting, you know, to waste you or to waste the church. Therefore, you must arise you must know, you must be, take cognizance of the fact that you are forever at a war front. 
That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. This battle is always on. And this battle will continue until Christ Jesus comes to rule on the earth. Amen. In fact, in fact, Psalm 110 verse 1 and 2 says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Now the enemies of Christ have not been made his footstool. And because they have not been made his footstool, this battle will continue until they have made you know, his footstool. So you are engaged in a spiritual warfare and you got to rise up and fight this war. With the Lord Jesus Christ on your side, you are more than a conqueror. Amen. And so these three powerful nations covenanted. They entered into a covenant. They entered into the cut a blood covenant that they will have no rest until they have wasted, until they have destroyed the nation of Judah. And the same covenant has been taken by enemies that are opposed to the work of God, that are opposed to God's purpose for your life and for your church in order to waste you and to destroy you. Are you going to sit down and watch them do that? Obviously, Jehoshaphat wasn't going to do that. Amen. So these nations covenanted amongst themselves to rise up and to destroy them. You can imagine the great nations of this world. Think of the United States. Think of Russia. Think of China covenanting amongst themselves to waste any small country that is in the world. Of course, no small nation, in fact, no nation in this world would be a match for any of these three, you know, combining together. And such is the situation of Jehoshaphat at this point in time. Look at the population of Judah. It was so small. They were not a match for these three powerful nations coming together. And so when this news came to Jehoshaphat, the Bible said that Jehoshaphat feared. Yes, when you have a great company of people coming against you and you look at your arsenal, you look at your weapons, you look at the people that you have, the natural tendency is to fear. Amen. But rather than this fear causing Jehoshaphat and Judah to bow to the threat of the enemy, rather than causing Judah and Jehoshaphat to crouch, you know, at the feet of the enemy, this fear drove Jehoshaphat to seek the face of God. Jehoshaphat ran unto God. Now, fear normally from the devil is to cause you to run to him, to come to bow to his threat. But in the case of Judah, in the case of Jehoshaphat that we just read, the fear, the threat of the enemy did not cause Jehoshaphat to bow to the enemy. Rather, he ran into the house of God. He ran to the presence of the Lord to seek the face of God because he knew that he was incapable of facing this enemy. Amen. When there is a threat from the enemy, what does it cause you to do? Does it drive you away from God or it drives you to God? When you hear of a bad news, a terrible news, a negative news, when you hear of powers congregating against you, what does that, what does that sound cause you to do? Does this create a fear in you that drives you to the enemy or it drives you to God? For many believers, this will drive them away from God and go to seek the face of the enemy to bow before him. But in the case of Jehoshaphat, this drove him to the presence of the Lord. He ran into the presence of God. Amen. Praise God. And when you go to the presence of God, you take your time to read the content of the prayer. He said, oh God, you commanded us that we should not waste these nations. You commanded us not to touch them. You showed them favor through us by not allowing us to destroy them as we destroyed all other nations around, around the nation of Israel at that point in time. And now to see how they are coming to repay us. They have now come to covenant to destroy us. If we had destroyed them at that point in time, there is no way they would have covenanted now to destroy us. You made us for, for, for reasons best known to you, not to waste them. But here they are now, repaying us with evil after we have done them good. Amen. Have you ever done good to people and they turn around to form an alliance against you? Have you ever been kind, have you shown kindness to people within the church and outside of the church, in your place of work, in your community, and they turn around to do evil to you? Such was the case with Judah in this story. 
the very nations that they spared, that they didn't destroy when they had the power to destroy them, they were now the ones that have risen against the nation of Judah. And Jehoshaphat reported this case to God. He said, oh God, we have no strength. We cannot face this multitude. Arise, O oh Lord, on our behalf. Amen. Have you done good to people and they repay you with evil? Jehoshaphat did good to these people. Israel spared them, but now they have risen up against the nation of Judah. Jehoshaphat brought this before God. And I love his confession. He said, oh Lord, we have no strength. We are weak at this point because we do not have the power to face these powerful nations. You see one thing with God, at our weakest point, that is when God shows up. Because if we want the glory to be his and not to be that of man. At the weakest point, if you draw out to God, God will rise up on your behalf. Amen. And so they went before the Lord. And it wasn't just Jehoshaphat that went before the Lord. It was an entire nation. Because the threat was not just against Jehoshaphat. The threat was against the nation of Judah. And so they all went, the entire nation went before the Lord and fasting and in prayers, seeking the face of God. And having sought the face of God, the Bible says they remained silent. They waited upon God. It's not sufficient for you to pray. You've got to wait upon God. You've got to let God speak to you. And so they waited upon the Lord. Amen. And God, and the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon one of them. And he spoke to them. The Word of God came. In any battle that you, have, that, that you are involved in, that you are engaged in, you need to hear God speak to you. You need to hear God speak to you. It is when you have taken your case to God and you wait upon him, that is when the battle becomes the Lord. Because you are not taking the initiative, you are allowing God himself to take the initiative. Praise God. And so the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel came upon Jehazel and he gave a word unto him. Praise God. Praise God. So Judah was intimidated by the threat of the enemy, but that intimidation did not drive Judah to Satan, to the enemy. Rather, it drove them to God and they cried unto God and the Lord heard them and the Lord spoke unto them. Praise God. Now look at verse 16. In verse 16, as they waited upon God, God gave them the strategy to fight this battle. Amen. Now, battles differ in life and no two battles are the same. And that is why the strategies for two battles cannot be the same. And that is why also you need to wait upon God to give you the strategy to fight each battle in life. Never think that the strategy you adopted in fighting a particular battle that gave you victory we give you the same victory in another battle. No, that would be foolish. It would be presumptuous. You've got to wait upon God to give you this strategy. Amen. And so as they fasted and they prayed, they sought the face of God and waited upon him, God gave them the strategy for this particular battle. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So we need to wait upon God and allow God to give us the strategy for each battle that we are engaged in. Praise God. Now, let's see what God said. Now, God commanded them. The strategy he gave to them was that of worship. The strategy he gave unto them was that of praise. It wasn't a strategy that they should carry a weapon and go into the, into the battle. Naturally, we want to go into fight. But God told them, this battle is not yours. You don't need to fight. I am going to do the fighting. Amen. Praise God. Now, in verse 20, in verse 20, they follow the strategy of the Lord. The Bible says that they rose up very early in the morning. You know, having been instructed, they didn't delay. They didn't waste time. They rose up very early in the morning to go into the battlefront. And as they went into the battlefront, Jehoshaphat, the king, encouraged them. He encouraged them because obviously there would have been doughty Thomases amongst them. And so he needed to encourage them. He said unto them, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. 
Now, the word prosper means to push forward. It means to break out. That means that if you believe in God, you will break out. You will push forward, you know, against your enemy. Every barrier and every obstacle that stands before you will be destroyed when you believe his prophets. Amen. Praise God. So the king, the king consulted with the people and with the singers, they organized themselves and then they put the singers in, in, ahead. They were the ones that were to do the worship, do the singing. And as they did that in verse 22, the Bible says that God set ambushment against them. He set an ambushment against them. Now, they sang, they worshipped. It was not a morning service, no. It was a service of joy as they sang. In fact, the word sang there means to shout. As they shouted in praise, in adoration to God, God set an ambushment against the enemy. Amen. As you shout unto the Lord, as you praise and worship the Lord, God is going to set an ambushment against every alliance of the enemy against you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In verses 22 to 23, the Bible says that as they sang, as they sang to the glory of God on top of their voices, the Lord set an ambushment against them. What kind of ambushment was that? The, you, know, you know, there are three powerful nations here that teamed up together against the nation of Israel. The Bible says God caused them to fight themselves. And as they were fighting themselves, you know, they destroyed themselves, wasted themselves. Instead of wasting the nation of Judah together with Jehoshaphat, they wasted themselves. And as they wasted themselves, what happened? Judah came into the scene and began to pick up the booty. Amen. They left everything. And all Judah came in to do was to harvest. Judah didn't come in to fight. Judah didn't come in coming to fight with weapons. In fact, his own weapon, if Judah fought at all, was to praise and to worship God. And as they praise and they worship God, that gave God the opportunity to fight on their behalf. All Judah did was to come in to gather the loot. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. As you make your battle that of the Lord, you will come in to gather even the loot in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Look at verses 27 and 28. They started with praise. They started with worship. After gathering the loot, they went into the house of the Lord again to praise and to worship the name of the Lord. As you praise and you worship God, and God gives victory unto you, that victory will lead you to go into the house of God again to praise him, to worship him, and to adore him. In verse 29, the Bible says that God put his fear in his enemies round about. And I pray that as you praise God, as you worship God, as he gives you victory, God is going to put his fear in your enemies round about that they will not only fear God, they will begin to fear you. In verse 30, which is the last verse we are concerned with, the Bible said the reign of Jehoshaphat became quiet. Your reign will be quiet when God gives you victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God will give you rest and quietness all around you. No one will rise up to trouble you again. Paul said in Galatians, he said, let no man trouble me for I bear upon my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. As God gives you peace and quietness in your reign, no man will trouble you in the mighty name of Jesus. And so these three powerful nations formed an alliance against the people of God, against Jehoshaphat and against Judah. This alliance, this threat, this fear, this intimidation drove Judah and Jehoshaphat into the presence of God. And when they saw the face of God, God spoke unto them. God gave them a strategy and they followed this strategy and God gave them the victory. As you wait upon the Lord, as you seek the face of God, as you run to God in your times of need, in your days of crisis, God will give you a voice. God will give you the strategy to employ in order to defeat the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. And as you defeat the enemy, you will come praise and to worship the Lord. And God will give you quietness and rest in your reign in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Give us the strategy to fight each battle that we need to fight on each day in the mighty name of Jesus. Speak to us by your spirit, O God, and fight our battles and cause us to come in for a great harvest. We ask, Lord, that you will give us quietness in our reign. In Jesus' name, we pray.